or can I say no? <laughs> no, in fact, it's true. Um, you know, I always, always loved everything linked to uh, extreme mechanics, uh, extreme devices. Uh, it's my religion. I cannot live without that. In fact, I, I, I didn't create this brand for ego reasons. My only topic was to say, I want to do what I like. And uh, it works fantastically well. And I still carry on doing what I like only. So uh, it's like a caprice transform into business. Can you imagine that? But it's true. So when I started, uh, I had this topic, I mean, this concept, this philosophy in mind. I didn't know if there would be a public. I imagined that there could be a public. So as I was very, uh, and I'm still down to earth, uh, at that time I was hoping that this brand uh, would be welcomed by a few tens of collectors in the world. And it happened that there were quickly hundreds, thousands, and now I don't know the limit because what is funny, I am in a segment where I am the only one because today the, the price point, public price point, is, let's say in US dollars or euro or whatever, uh, tax free is uh, above uh, 180,000. Yes. Uh, so in this segment, I am the only one. Uh, the, I have no competition. So what is funny then is that I don't know the limit of this segment. I think I don't want to give lesson to anybody because uh, I'm always careful and uh, I, I don't judge anything. But uh, uh, to my opinion, many brands have been drastically going into volume too much. I created this brand to escape from the volume, volume business. So volume is not my cup of tea. Uh, of course, uh, we have a growth. And this growth is consistent, but I love to contain the growth. I, I think with the brand awareness today, I could easily uh, uh, come with a commercial uh, movement and uh, do tens of thousands of uh, watches. I will never do that, never. Because then I will have to stop everything that I love, that is to say crazy developments, uh, a huge developments, uh, heavy developments, to, to do something commercial. So I'm not interested at all into that. So uh, even though uh, uh, today the brand has a correct volume, because this year, uh, last year I did about uh, 2,364 pieces. This year, 3,600, 700. So there is a growth, but I want to control my growth. And the second aspect that I, was, that I wanted to enhance is uh, I think the brand today is very, very successful, which is unbelievable uh, because we have, grow, we, we have a demand that is totally incredible still today uh, with this crisis. But I think the fact that we have been creating a lot, never slept, never have a pillow of uh, laziness has given the brand a real legitimacy and people recognize that and also uh, when you when you work like that with new models etc etc then uh, uh, the market that you create is much more dynamic yes of course of course i know that and uh, uh, what i love is that there are so many, so many clients that have got uh, 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 a lot of Richard Mille watches on the wrist uh, because they have, uh, uh, many of them, they have got 10, 15, 20 pieces in collection. So uh, it's not because they are compulsive collectors, but the brand is uh, uh, covers a spectrum which is so interesting from uh, lifestyle model to uh, 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 sports models, women's model, uh, uh, artistic models, etc. with the common denominator, of, of course, that is a technique. So the choice is so high that you can wear a meal watch every day without getting bored.
I have been always uh, very clear on the, on the price point. Uh, when you take uh, huge development, sometimes that can take seven years, six years, four years, uh, divided by a limited number of pieces, the cost is huge. No, no doubt about that. Uh, uh, so the price point is not a, a marketing philosophy. It's just the result of my philosophy, my love for technique, extreme technique. Uh, I still have today between 35 to 40 percent of spare parts that go to the garbage that are wasted. So it's not because uh, I love that, but I have no choice because uh, uh, sometimes uh, you have uh, some calibers, some movements that uh, need uh, uh, to be assembled uh, six to eight weeks. And during that time, everything, anything can happen. Yes, yes, yes. And w my, my, uh, my surprise always is coming from the fact that it's a very clinical object uh, that creates a lot of emotion. Uh, and this paradox, I love this paradox because really, uh, uh, when I see people say, oh, you make me dream, even people that cannot afford the watches, but people say, oh, what, is, what you do is so nice, uh, it's so extreme, uh, uh, without any compromise, uh, in a marketing world that is very, if I can say, prostituted, etc. etc. So, uh, it, it, this gives me a lot of a lot emotion as well. It could have been lethal for the brand because imagine uh, Nadal playing uh, in a court and the watch uh, coming off and uh, in the middle with the, all the cameras of the world uh, spotting on it uh, could have been horrible for the brand but we need to be courageous we need to take risk uh, uh, and you know wh what uh, my client love is that they are entrepreneurs many of them so they know what is a risk, what means a risk. So in, in the watch, they recognize there is a risk and they love the risk. Of course, I mean, in, in many ways, because uh, uh, for example, I developed, uh, it just finished now, we just finished the development of, uh, of uh, aviation, of an aviation watch. It has taken more than now, more than seven years of development uh, with the uh, extremely complex watch. Uh, of course, everything that uh, a computer can give you one tenth of a second, but at the same time, we do a piece of art. And uh, uh, it has been, uh, as we say always, uh, tears and blood. Uh, uh, for this development because uh, uh, you know you have ideas of um, uh, for example of functions um, you test the function separately they work you put everything together it's a disaster so this is why I always say I have one foot in the 19th century one foot in the 21st century because sometimes uh, uh, like every brand, we, we do developments uh, also on computer, but it doesn't work in a real life. So you have to go back to the old tools to correct, etc., etc. And this is always bring me a lot of emotion. So uh, uh, I love this those paradox uh, because it's very paradoxical. Yes, yes. It's a chronograph that gives you, uh, of course, with the flyback, but not only that, it gives you a lot of information, calculation of the air density, calculation of uh, the ratio between nautical miles, kilometers, gallons, liters, etc. So, uh, uh, that nobody will use anyway. But it's a piece of art. Like me, <laughs> like the chronographe. There are plenty of room to go. Uh, my only topic, my only limit is to say those materials must have a clear objective, no gimmick. I wouldn't like to have a material that I would use for marketing reasons. So 
everything is as clearly an objective of weight, shock resistance, uh, uh, wear resistance, etc. etc. So, uh, uh, tribology, etc. So, I uh, hate any artificial approach. So, everything has a substance. Uh, and the, and also, there are plenty of um, materials that, that I will never use. Also, for safety reasons, because they are toxic or whatsoever. I will never do that. No, because as I said at the beginning, I end watch business could be very boring. Uh, it's a kind of terminology that today doesn't work anymore because everybody knows that uh, uh, when you say your legitimacy comes from the 19th century, etc., etc., is not true because everybody is using uh, CAD machines, uh, uh, computers, etc., etc. So, it, for me, it has no interest. So, I, I love, uh, I always say, it's important for the high and watch business to be open to the world of art, of sport, of lifestyle, with the common denominator, of course, of extreme technique. So, the, the Congo watch has been a, quite a challenge uh, because, I, and I love also uh, to have the shock, a cultural shock between different dimensions, like with the Airbus uh, company uh, that creates uh, aircraft and the Airbus watch that is very tiny like that. Uh, uh, then you have an artist with, uh, that is doing graffitis on walls, on trains, on cars, on trucks, sometimes on aircraft, to work in a very, very tiny dimension. Then it was so nice, so interesting, because when I said to Congo, we are going to do a wash together, and he said, how can I do that? You want me to just to paint away? No, I said, no, no, no. We have to go into the real mechanical device. He said, but it's impossible. And I explained to him that we would achieve this. So it has taken about six months only to select the painting, the the, the, the pigments, the, 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 endure, I mean the, the, the resistance of the painting, the thickness of the painting, the airbrush. So only to select that, six to eight months to combine both of them, airbrush and the uh, uh, pigments. After that, uh, uh, you had to organize uh, uh, the, the test because uh, uh, to go from a wall to a tiny pieces like that has, has been a nightmare for him. Because uh, uh, any coat or any overcoat is lethal. So you, th that is to say the piece is going to the garbage again. So, uh, and I wanted every piece of the movement, including the wheels, to be painted. So it was a, 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 a total headache, but it worked. At the end, the result is just unbelievable. You have 30 pieces, each one is unique with different colors, different approach, uh, different uh, artistic dimension, different meaning from Congo. Because, th for several reasons, because of its difference uh, with the other um, existing brands, uh, because of the risk certainly I had taken, because of the fact that the watch is so ergonomic, so nice to wear. When you wear, every time I see a, a client, a potential client, he say, oh, one day I will buy a meal watch. I say, be very careful, because when you are in it, you are finished. And it is totally true. So, uh, 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 they became fans uh, uh, of, the, of the brand. It's funny because uh, the day before, they followed the stage at the Tour de France. And um, uh, Mark Cavendish is totally mad about the mill watch. He races with the mill watch. And yesterday he won the stage with the wheel watch. He was so happy because he, 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 he told me my night bed book is a meal catalog. <laughs> you make and, uh, it's very. I had I had um, uh, a client. He's a food, a very famous food, football player. The other day, he, he, he sent me a text message saying, uh, "In fact, all your objective in my in your life is to make me ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Every new meal watch coming out, I have to buy it." Yes. And they say, 
Did I ever force you? He said, no, you don't need to force me. Yeah, it was funny because uh, uh, I, I was with the, the, the boss of the Tour de France and they introduced me uh, to uh, Andy Schleck and Schleck told me, oh, Richard Mill watches. We dream about Mill. In all the bus, most of the time we speak about the, the watches because we all love watches and we love Richard Mill watches. And I say, and I, and I say, and I had on the wrist the Dandal watch. Uh, the, that won uh, three years ago, four years ago, uh, uh, French Open, Wimbledon, and US Open the same year. So it's a collector. And I say, you want to test it? I say, he said, oh yes, can I? I said, one condition, you must wear tonight, at the arrival at Alpe d'Huez, you must wear the yellow jersey. He said, okay. So, he did the stage, and the, on the podium, he had the yellow jersey. So when I went to take the watch back, he said, eh, it brought me luck, but if you take it back from me, tomorrow I will lose. I say, I have no choice, I have to go back to Paris. So I took the watch and the following day he lost the yellow jersey, it was bad. <laughs> yes, and I love that. I mean, it's for me, it, it, it's my best rewarding. I mean, uh, when I see people, uh, uh, as I say, it's a very clinical watch. When you see a watch in carbon, sharp, nothing special, I mean, except extraordinary technique. Uh, uh, but you must be, re as I say, you must be really sophisticated to understand that. But it's a very clinical object. And uh, it creates an emotion that is totally un unbelievable, unbelievable.